Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing another Tea Time Talko where we discuss an inner beauty topic. So I've had a lot of requests to talk a little bit more about um, coping strategies for like, anxiety um, and I thought that was a really good video and I wanted to specifically hone in on how to build confidence. Um, today I want to talk about a specific kind of anxiety um, which is performance anxiety which you might think oh well I'm not a musician or I'm not a dancer or I don't do a performing art therefore I don't need to listen to this but this is relevant for anyone in any path in life because we are dealing with our life performance all the time and this is something that like my mum likes to describe my anxiety as she's like it's kind of like life performance anxiety i like to think of anxiety as quite a spectrum so some people have just some worries some nerves some anxiousness um and other people you know as you get closer to the more intense end it becomes like a full-blown anxiety so i feel like we can all relate to this um so i want to talk about i guess how i build courage especially when i'm leading up to a um, a performance situation or a situation where I have to do something an act or something that is a very scary for me that I have a lot of anxiety about that I'm terrified about doing whether that is speaking to someone that I care about and you know being really truthful and it might be a scary situation because they might feel hurt by what you have to say or whether it's like going into like a big crowded event or something where you're terrified of crowds I feel like what I can offer you today some advice should help you in some way in your life I want to use a bit of an example. I had an audition to do a few weeks ago. It was just for the uni orchestra, guys. And I've been playing in the uni orchestra for years. It's fine. It's not a big deal. But for some reason, the audition process this year, I was just really anxious about it. I think it's because I have a lot to lose because I've been leading that orchestra for three years and this was going to be my fourth year. But like people that have won jobs in like the Melbourne Symphony, for example, you do the audition, you get a trial which is quite a nervy experience. And then if you pass the trial, then you win the job. And it's not like every year you have to re-audition. So the other reason I was nervous as well is that attached to the role of Concertmaster was the mentorship program, um, which was something that was my baby. Like I thought it up and I thought it how, how much it could contribute to the program, but I was only able to do it if I actually won the job. Like I had to actually audition against other people and win the job. And they weren't just gonna hand it to me on a silver platter. So there was a lot of, a lot at stake you could say with this so I did feel a lot more anxiety around this audition than I have in past years but I knew that to be successful I couldn't just like push down these fears and just forget about them and try and cover them up um, and just hope for the best because I've done that before in performance situations or auditions and I it turns into an absolute mess on the day because I haven't mentally prepared myself properly so apart from practicing as much as I could on my actual violin playing to make sure I could play the parts well which I know I could I had to spend a lot of time mentally practicing, actually practicing the act of auditioning mentally. So I used a process that, um, I will link the resource that I found online because I was like searching like how to build courage <laughs> basically on Google. And I came across this really great article about MMA fighters, so mixed martial arts fighters and how they build themselves up for a big fight because that's a terrifying experience. You're fighting another human being. You're trying to hurt each other. Like that's the point. So that would be a very terrifying experience to put yourself into. So they have a couple of courage building kind of protocols that they go through to build themselves up for this fight. Um, and I thought it was very applicable for going in to do an audition. So the first thing they suggest is building a script. And this means that you're like basically jotting down the day of what's going to happen on the day or leading up to that particular event on the day, like um, what you're going to do in the morning, uh, what you're going to eat, you know, and then like what you maybe even what you're going to wear. You basically write out a plan for the day and for the moment as well. So like I'm going to you know, the door's gonna be open for me, I'm gonna walk in, there will be a screen there, the people will be behind the screen, there'll be a, a single music stand in the middle. The place where the scary event is being held, if you haven't been there before, my suggestion to lower your anxiety about that situation is to go and actually be in the space um, that it is being held in. So if you've got a big scary meeting to do, a presentation, go into the meeting room and sit in there and just take it in a wee bit just to, so you can really then go away and properly visualize. So I literally wrote out a script for my day. Like I was like, it's gonna be in this room and I know what that looks like. You know, I know there's gonna be like a little warm up room and there'll be other people practicing in the warm up room, which can be quite distracting, but I kind of had an action plan for what I was gonna do with that as well, just to keep my mindset really strong. 
so I wouldn't get distracted by what others were doing. And I even had like, you know, I'm gonna get up at this time and I'm gonna go for a walk at this time to get my blood pumping and it's always good to do a bit of exercise. It helps to release um, endorphins and helps to make you happier and more calm as well. Yeah, so I like basically planned out my whole day and then I would sit there and just go over that plan in my head leading up to the, the, the audition day. So, you know, um, for 20 minutes a day, say leading up to it, I was just sort of a, sitting there like, my eyes shut. Sometimes I did it while I was out and about, like at a cafe, I'd order a drink and I'd be doing some other work and then I think, oh, I need to do my mental practice. So I'd sit there <laughs> in the middle of a cafe, like just with my eyes shut, like, people must have thought it was so weird, like I'm meditating in a cafe, but it's really, really, really powerful. I think that really contributed to my sense of calm that I felt in the audition, because particularly in the first round, I had to do two rounds, particularly in the first round, I felt very, very calm and in control. The, the reason this works is that when you've gone through this process, when you've visualized yourself going through the day or through the event many times, that means when you actually go to do it, when you when it's, when it's the D-Day comes, you're going to actually have already done it in your brain, so you won't be as scared. You know, like when you do something scary for the first time, it is its most scary, and as you do it more and more, it becomes less scary. So that the idea is that you've already done the scary thing many times in your head, so it won't feel as scary in the moment. And I fully agree, it didn't feel as scary as I expected it to on the day, so I think this really helped. The next technique that the MMA fighters use is a technique called framing. Um, and this refers to framing your mindset, which I, I struggle with this part, guys. I really, really do. This is where you have to frame your positive mindset. You have to actually challenge the way you think. For me, I get a lot of negative self-talk. That, that's one of the worst things that's such a negative way to put it too, but I struggle with negative self-talk a, a lot. My self-esteem is actually quite low um, and I'm really, really working on it because it's like I treat myself so badly compared to how I treat others. I'm not a very mean person, I don't think. Like, I think I'm pretty kind to most people I interact with, um, even if I'm frustrated at them, I, especially over the last few years. I think when I was younger, I was a little bit more volatile and couldn't control my emotions as well. Sometimes I'd get you know, a bit like upset and angry like at school or, you know, um, and I would lash out maybe a bit more, but I've certainly learned to control my emotions a bit better over the years um, and gotten a lot more professional. However, I have not done that with myself, so I still bash myself in my head, like I'm like, you're useless, you suck, you're not gonna make it, you're a failure, well, all these terrible things. And I feel like I can't help it because especially when you're having, say, a full-blown anxiety attack, that's the worst. You really just feel like you cannot control your brain. But the best thing to do is when you're not in a very bad anxiety attack, um, so when you're just functioning on like a normal day-to-day -day basis, try and do some framing. So to frame my audition, I'll use an example because it's quite hard to explain. To get myself in a better frame of mind for the audition, I wrote things down like it's just a performance so that I wouldn't think of it as like audition. It's like reframing the way you think of like a, um, an exam as it's just a quiz, it's just a little pop quiz as opposed to an exam which sounds scary and has like a negative connotation to it. So instead of an audition which I think of as like they're literally judging me, their purpose is there to be, I'm there to be judged. Instead of thinking of it like that, I was like, it's a performance. I'm sharing my gift. I'm sharing my love of music and I'm sharing that with them. And that is a really positive thing for me, a really, really powerful tool. So I have to say to that to myself constantly leading up to it, you know, and you may not believe it at first. I'm a very skeptical person and it takes a lot for me to reframe my mind because my brain, my stupid little like devil on my shoulder will be like, you don't believe that. Like you're just faking it. You're just, you're just telling yourself lies. So I have a very strong devil on my shoulder, but I think it's important to at least try and to believe that if you do it enough, it will change. And there's proven science that this kind of positive psychology will affect your mood, you know, in the end. Like if you just keep doing it, if you keep saying, I'm an awesome person, I'm wonderful at this, I am, um, this is just a performance. It's not an audition, it's just performance. I'm sharing my gift. You feel a bit dorky writing it down. You're sort of like, oh, that's really cocky, but you've got to be confident in yourself because if you don't believe in yourself, who will? You know, that's the Kanye attitude as Robin Sharma likes to talk about it. Kanye has a giant poster of Kanye in his living room. He believes so strongly in, his, in himself and whether you like him or hate him, he's successful. Something else I wrote was, I already have the job. I just have to do the protocol. So I thought of it instead of like me auditioning for this role, it's like, I've already got it. I've already done it for three years. I got this. If this is just a protocol to make sure that it's fair, you know, make sure that there's, I'm not being treated, um, preferential treatment or for anything. Like I have to do the process, 
but I've already got it because I know I'm the best person for the role. Do you know what I mean? Like you've got to be confident and it sounds dorky. I know guys, it sounds so bad, but this is the only way you have to believe in yourself if you want to build confidence. And you may not feel confident when you first start out with this sort of framing exercise, but the more you do it, the more you'll actually start to believe it. Something else I wrote down was this has been an incredibly important journey for my personal development and I can't wait to share this with people. So that for me was a really positive way of framing the whole experience. Like this whole experience of leading up to an audition, it might be scary. Look, I may not be successful in the end, you know. I did win the seat, by the way. But um, leading up to it, you know, if I, if I for some reason hadn't, if some amazing performer had come in and taken that role, I would have been disappointed for sure. But it wouldn't have been a waste of my time. It wouldn't have been a waste of my effort because I learned so much about myself doing this, you know, and now I'm able to share that process with you guys to help you. So this was not in vain. And again, like the first step where you're building a script with framing, you want to go over these things every day, reread them every day, write them out if that's easier, talk to yourself in the mirror and say it. And the last sort of tactic that the MMA fighters use is called othering. And this is where you make yourself into a legend in your own mind. You know, you're building up your avatar in your head of what you are. By imagining like your sort of alter ego as this confident, powerful sort of character that can do anything, the more you sort of say that to yourself, that I am this, I am this, you know, I am powerful, I am confident, I am a leader, I'm worthy of this role, I am a beautiful performer, I am technically proficient. If you say these things to yourself enough, you're gonna start to believe it. So I wrote down really dorky things like, I am confident, I am world class, I am inspirational, I am a thoughtful violinist, I am a mature musician, I have sensibility in my playing, I am trustworthy as a leader. So for example, if you have to give a presentation, you might wanna say things like, I'm a confident speaker, I know what I'm talking about, I've done my research, I'm the perfect person to be delivering this presentation and I'm the perfect person to be executing the project or something like that. Coming up with that sort of idealized um, alias of what you want to be and just repeating that to yourself, it can be a really good way to sort of pump you up. I literally, before I went into the audition room, in my quiet practice room, I, I said a few of these things to myself in the mirror. Like I stood there because I was warmed up. I knew what I was doing. I couldn't practice anymore. Like you can't, you can't learn anything more five minutes before the audition. So I spent that time just getting my mindset ready. And that way, when I walked into the room, I felt really calm. I was like, I'm just executing my protocol. And it was a really positive experience and I could not wait to share it with you guys. So I hope you have enjoyed today's little talk and I hope that it's been helpful for you. Do let me know if there are any other topics you want me to cover in my inner beauty series. I love giving advice and I love sharing kind of what I'm learning through my journey in life. It's very much a journey. If you have any suggestions, do write them in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up for me so I know to make more. And if you are new here, I warmly welcome you to subscribe. I'd love to have you here. I do make one personal development video a week. And if you're interested, I do also make uh, beauty videos for outer beauty, you could say. So makeup videos, particularly with a focus on fair skin. And until next time, thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.